Welcome to Steel Incorporated's owner-operator safety maintenance and operation of gasoline-powered cutoff machines. This video has been produced to demonstrate the safe and proper use of steel cutoff machines. The steel philosophy is to continually improve its products. As a result, engineering changes and improvements are made from time to time. If the operating characteristics or the appearance of your cutoff machine differs from those described in this video or your instruction manual, please contact your steel dealer for information and assistance before operating your cutoff machine. For safe operation, read and follow all the safety precautions in your cutoff machine's instruction manual. Fully understand this manual before operating your machine. Improper use can result in serious or even fatal injury. To reduce the risks of personal injury, only use the proper grinding wheels. Never lend or rent your cutoff machine without supplying the instruction manual. And be sure that anyone using your cutoff machine understands the information contained in the manual prior to use and has prior experience with such machines. Minors should never be allowed to use a cutoff machine. Bystanders, especially children and animals, should not be allowed in the area where a cutoff machine is in use. Never let the cutoff machine run unattended. Employers should establish a training program for operators of gasoline-powered, handheld, portable cutoff machines to assure safe operation of these machines. These precautions and warnings apply to the use of all steel cut-quick cutoff machines. A cutoff machine is a high-speed grinding tool, and some special safety precautions must be observed, as with any other cutoff machine, to reduce the risk of personal injury. We will discuss many of these precautions throughout this video. This portion of the video will point out the basic features found on most steel cut-quick cutoff machines. Additional information on these features will be described in the appropriate sections throughout this video. Your cutoff machine will have an air filter system, one of the most important features of your machine that will require routine maintenance. This maintenance will vary by model and by manufacturer. Shown here is the Steel X2 filter. These filters require no maintenance, but are to be replaced when a loss of engine power is detected. You do not clean these. Check your instruction manual for the proper maintenance for your cutoff machine's air filter system. This is a purge pump designed to fill the carburetor with fresh fuel. This pump not only aids in easier starting, but is also an effective feature for purging warm fuel out of the carburetor, displacing it with fresh cooler fuel, which helps in eliminating hot start problems. Your machine may come with a decompression valve, as shown on our steel cut-quick. Depressing this valve prior to starting the unit will allow a portion of compression to be relieved from the cylinder, resulting in easier cranking. Once started, the valve will return to the fully closed normal position. The starter grips are large, making it easy to grasp for those with large hands or when wearing heavy gloves. Steel also uses their trademarked Elasto start handle on select units, which acts as a shock absorber when the starter rope is pulled, resulting in a more comfortable cranking process. These are the machine's carburetor adjustment screws. They may vary by model. Check with your instruction manual for the proper adjustment procedure for your machine. This is the fuel tank cap. Here, steel utilizes a twist to seal design. This is the cutoff machine's rear handle. This is where the throttle trigger and throttle trigger interlock will be located on steel cutoff machines. The throttle trigger will determine the speed your machine runs when depressed, just as the accelerator pedal in your automobile. The throttle trigger interlock is a protective device that will only allow you to depress the throttle trigger if you have a full grip on the rear handle assembly. A feature that is designed to eliminate the accidental acceleration of the machine when it is running in the work area. This switch assembly will act as the on-off device, as well as the locking device for the throttle for cold starting. Other than starting your machine, never operate the machine with the throttle engaged in this locked starting position. The choke lever is used when starting a cold machine, or one that has not been run for several minutes. This will be covered in more detail in the starting your cutoff machine portion of this video. The engine on your cutoff machine creates vibration. Steel uses anti-vibration systems on its cutoff machines that will help reduce the transfer of these vibrations to the operator. This is the machine's muffler. 
equipped with a spark arrestor screen. The cast arm of your machine connects the engine to the wheel. Some arms, or at least the wheel support, are reversible, allowing for centered cutting, where the unit is best balanced for handheld use, or for outside cutting, typically used when utilizing a cart attachment as shown here, or cutting along a curb or wall. The guard will determine the flow of debris and sparks when using your machine. It is adjustable for varied working conditions. We will discuss this further later in the video. All steel units are supplied with a water attachment, an important feature used to reduce airborne dust in certain cutting applications. This is the unit's tensioning nut. Used to properly adjust the tension of the drive belt, the drive belt transfers the power from the engine to the wheel. The wheel is the part that will come into contact with the material you want to separate. Only two types of abrasive wheels may be used on your steel cut quick, diamond segment and composite. Using the proper wheel rated for the material you are cutting is extremely important. Not doing so can cause serious harm to the operator or even fatal injury. We will spend more time on this subject in the Understanding Authorized Wheel segment of this video. The thrust washer and bolt are what holds the wheel in place on the spindle. One area to pay close attention to is the type and condition of the abrasive wheels that you are using on your machine. Never use circular saw blades, carbide tip blades, rescue blades, wood cutting blades, or tooth blades of any nature on your cutoff machine. They can cause severe and even fatal personal injury from reactive forces, blade contact, or thrown teeth. Never cut wood of any type. We will cover reactive forces in more detail shortly in this video. Only use the abrasive wheels rated for the material to be cut. Use of the wrong abrasive wheel for the type of material being cut may cause the wheel to shatter, causing serious or fatal injury. Steel composite abrasive wheels are a cost-effective wheel that can also be used to cut metal, masonry, or asphalt and ductile iron depending on their rating. Steel diamond abrasive wheels have much better, longer-lasting performance than the composite abrasive wheels. The diamond wheels are steel-centered and diamond particles are embedded in the cutting edges. They are not suitable for cutting metal. And here is a tip when using diamond wheels. Wet cutting concrete can not only help reduce dust in the work area, but also provides other safety implications with respect to reactive forces. In a pinch situation, the water may act as a lubricant and reduce the energy of reactive forces. Steel diamond abrasive wheels can last as much as 200 to 400 times longer than an ordinary composite abrasive wheel. Your instruction manual will indicate which wheels will work best for the types of materials you will be working with. Here is a brief list of the materials that can be cut with these two types of wheels. With composite non-diamond abrasive wheels, depending on their rating, you can cut asphalt, concrete, stone, ductile cast pipes, and steel. With diamond abrasive wheels, you can cut asphalt, concrete, stone, abrasive concrete, green concrete, clay bricks, and clay pipe. Again, never use any diamond abrasive wheel to cut metal. Always make certain that the maximum operating wheel speed rated for your wheel is above or equal to the spindle speed of your cutoff machine, as provided in the specifications of your machine's instruction manual. A wheel that is not so rated may shatter or break and poses a threat of serious or fatal injury to the operator. Always allow newly mounted composite abrasive wheels to run at operating speed with a properly adjusted wheel guard for at least one minute before use. While doing this, do not allow anyone to stand in front of or in line with the wheel. Inspect your wheels frequently. On composite non-diamond abrasive wheels, check for cracks or warping and replace immediately if you find either of these as they could break or shatter if you continue to use them. If you feel unusual vibration or any other unusual operating condition while using a cutoff machine, stop the machine immediately. Determine the reason for the unusual condition and correct it before using the machine again. If an abrasive wheel has failed or broken, a thorough inspection must be made to determine the cause so it does not happen again before further use of the machine. 
If the problem cannot be determined and corrected, the machine should be checked by a servicing steel dealer before using the machine again. Never wear a wheel down to a size that allows the thrust washers, also known as flanges, to contact the workpiece. Also, never store and reuse a composite non-diamond wheel that has been used with water. Use these wheels up the same day and then discard them. Never remount a diamond abrasive wheel without first inspecting it for undercutting, flatness, core fatigue, segment damage or loss, signs of overheating or discoloration, and possible arbor hole damage. Never use any wheels that have been dropped. And always make certain that when you mount your diamond abrasive wheel to your machine, that you do so where the arrow on the wheel points in the same direction as the rotation of the machine's spindle. Also, when mounting your wheels, Make sure that the thrust washer mating surfaces are clean, smooth, and straight so the wheel will run true. And always make sure that the wheel's label blotter has a diameter greater than the diameter of the thrust washers to protect the wheel material from having direct contact with the washers. An important step before operation of your cutoff machine is to ensure that you wear the proper clothing and that you have the proper, certified, personal protective gear needed to do the job safely. Your clothing must be sturdy and snug-fitting, but allow complete freedom of movement. Wear overhauls or long pants to protect your legs. Never wear loose-fitting jackets, scarves, neckties, jewelry, or flared or cuffed pants, and unconfined long hair or anything else that could become caught on obstacles or moving parts of the machine. As you can see in this demonstration, when operating, a cutoff machine can generate sparks which may ignite some clothing. To reduce the risk of injury in this situation, Steel recommends that you wear clothing made of leather, wool, flame retardant treated cotton, or tightly woven heavier cotton such as denim. Some other flame retardant synthetic fabrics are also suitable, but others such as, but not limited to, nylon, rayon, and acetate can melt during a fire into a tar-like matter that can burn into the skin. Check the clothing manufacturer's instructions before use. Also, it is important that you always keep your clothing free of oil, fuel, grease, and other flammable substances. Good footing is extremely important when working with your cutoff machine. Wear sturdy work boots with non-slip soles. Steel recommends that you wear boots that incorporate steel toes. You should always use heavy, non-slip gloves when operating your cutoff machine. They will improve your grip and help protect your hands. When working with a cutoff machine, you should always protect your eyes, ears, and head. To reduce risk to your eyes, always wear goggles or properly fitted safety glasses with adequate top and side protection that complies with ANSI Z87.1 standards. Protect your hearing by wearing plugs or muffs. If you operate a cutoff machine on a regular basis, you should have your hearing checked on a regularly scheduled basis. And to protect your head, wear an approved safety hard hat. Masonry, concrete, metal, and other materials can generate dust, mists, and fumes known to cause serious or fatal injury or illness, such as respiratory disease, cancer, birth defects, or other reproductive harm. If you're unfamiliar with the risks associated with a particular material being cut, review the material safety data sheet and or consult your employer, the material manufacturer or supplier, government agencies such as OSHA and NIOSH and other sources on hazardous materials. Control the dust, mists and fumes at the source when possible and utilize a water attachment for dust suppression when feasible. When the inhalation of dust, mists, and fumes from the cutting process cannot be eliminated, the operator and any bystanders should always wear a respirator approved by NIOSH and MSHA and rated for the material being cut. Cutting masonry, concrete, and other materials with silica in their composition may give off dust containing crystalline silica. Repeated and or substantial inhalation of airborne crystalline silica can cause serious or fatal respiratory diseases, including silicosis. In addition, California and some other authorities have listed respirable crystalline silica as a substance known to cause cancer. When cutting such materials, always follow the respiratory precautions mentioned previously.
Breathing asbestos dust is dangerous and can cause severe or fatal injury, respiratory illness, or cancer. Never use your cutoff machine to cut or disturb asbestos, asbestos-containing products, or products such as pipes, which are wrapped or covered with asbestos insulation. If you have any reason to believe that you might be cutting asbestos, immediately stop and contact your employer or local OSHA representative. One of the first things you will do before beginning work is transfer your cutoff machine to the area to be worked in. Follow these simple rules in transporting your machine to help assure its proper running characteristics as well as your own safety. When transporting by vehicle, properly secure your cutoff machine to prevent turnover that can cause fuel spillage or damage to the machine. And never transport your machine with the wheel mounted. A wheel damaged, even slightly, during transportation may crack and shatter during operation, possibly causing serious or fatal injury. Always shut off your cutoff machine before putting it down or carrying it, and make sure the wheel is stopped rotating before transport. When carrying by hand, the engine must be off and the wheel stationary. Grip the top of the front handle and carry with the muffler facing away from your body. Your instruction manual will have a chapter with a maintenance chart. Study this carefully and follow the maintenance procedures and timelines as described in the manual. If any maintenance needs to be performed that is not included in the manual or that you are incapable of performing yourself, take the machine to your nearest steel dealer to have that work performed prior to using the cutoff machine again. Before beginning your work, do a quick check of these items to make sure the components of your cutoff machine are all in good order and working properly. Check the machine over for loose or missing fasteners and tighten or replace if necessary. Check the throttle trigger and throttle trigger interlock and stop switch to make sure they are working properly. Inspect the wheel guard and assure that it is mounted properly and that it doesn't have any cracks or damage. If you find that it does, do not use this cutoff machine until the proper repairs have been made. Check the machine's anti-vibration mounts and assure that they are functioning properly. Make certain the handles are free of moisture, oil, and grease. Inspect the muffler and make sure that the spark arrestor screen is clean and not plugged with carbon. Clean or replace the screen if necessary. It's now time to install the wheel on your cutoff machine. First, make certain that the wheel you are planning on using is in good and undamaged condition and that it is the proper wheel for the work you will be doing. Also, make sure that the guard is in good condition, fastened securely and positioned so that sparks, dust, and cut material are deflected away from the operator and cannot reach flammable surroundings. The engine must always be off and the engine cooled before installing or inspecting any wheel or performing any maintenance to the machine. Now, block the shaft with the locking pin by inserting the pin through the hole in the pulley guard until the locking pin engages in one of the pulley spaces behind the guard. You will probably need to rotate the shaft slightly back and forth until you feel the pin engage. Fit the wheel onto the arbor paying attention to the arrow on the wheel if it is a diamond wheel so that the arrow is always pointing in the same direction as the forward rotation of the arbor. Composite wheels can be mounted either side. Install the thrust washer, making sure the tabs engage with the shaft grooves. Screw in the hex bolt and tighten. This should be hand tightened with a supplied wrench. You can now remove the locking pin from the drive belt guard. Next, you will want to make sure that the drive belt is tensioned properly. Follow the instructions in your machine's instruction manual for the procedure to properly adjust the tension on your machine's belt. Seen here is Steel's automatic spring action belt tensioning device that is standard on all current steel models. To initially tension the belt, loosen the three hex bolts. Make sure the tension nut shown here is pointed and locked at zero. If it is not, with your machine's wrench, turn the tensioning nut counterclockwise approximately one quarter turn until it reaches and locks in zero. The tension nut is spring-loaded, so always hold your wrench securely. 
Now turn the nut clockwise, and it will engage. The belt is now automatically tensioned properly. Now tighten the three hex bolts. Once the belt has been initially tightened, the belt can be retensioned by simply loosening the three hex bolts. The belt will automatically be tensioned by the force of the tensioning spring. Retighten the hex bolts and you are done. Your cutoff machine will require a gasoline oil mixture. Steel recommends its 50 to 1 two-stroke engine oil and a mid-range grade of quality unleaded gasoline with a minimum octane rating of 89. If this cannot be found in your area, use premium unleaded fuel. Never use an oil that is BIA or TCW rated, as they are made for cooler running two-stroke water-cooled engines. Steel cutoff machines are two-stroke air-cooled engines and require a different blend than the water-cooled oils. When filling your fuel canister, pour the proper amount of oil in the canister first and then fill with gasoline. Make sure that you always fill your fuel canister on the ground and not on any rubber-tired vehicle. Close the canister and shake it vigorously by hand to ensure the proper mixing of the oil with the fuel. And caution, when handling fuel, always take care to avoid direct contact with the skin and avoid inhaling fuel vapors. Always fuel your machine in a well-ventilated area, outdoors, on bare ground, and at least 10 feet from where you will be starting and using the cutoff machine. Your machine is in the appropriate fueling area. Make sure that the machine is shut off and that the engine has had time to cool down. Wipe any dirt or debris away from the fuel cap and tank so none of these materials accidentally fall into the tank when fueling. The fuel tank can build up pressure. So when removing the cap, do so slowly to allow this pressure to gradually escape. Never use a tool to open the fuel cap on your steel cutoff machine, as this can damage the cap and cause it to leak. Fill the fuel tank, but never to the brim. Reinstall the fuel cap so it engages completely and wipe away any fuel that may have spilled and dispose of the cleaning rag in a safe area away from where you will be working. If when fueling you spill any fuel on your clothing, it is very important that you change clothes immediately and prior to using your cutoff machine. Do not rely on evaporation to dry your clothes. Flammable quantities of fuel fumes may remain on your clothes after a spill for longer than you may expect. Cutting with a cutoff machine can produce sparks that can ignite these clothes that can cause serious or fatal injury and property damage. You are now ready to start your cutoff machine and begin work. Again, make sure that you are at least 10 feet away from where you fueled your machine. First, understand how the controls work. Begin by depressing the throttle trigger and the throttle trigger interlock at the same time and move the on-off switch to the start position. You can now release the throttle trigger and it will remain in a partially pressed position. Set the choke to fully closed if the engine is cold or has not been run for several minutes. If the engine is still warm and had just been shut off, you will set the choke in the mid position, setting the throttle trigger at fast idle. Press the compression release button in. Once the engine is fired, this will release automatically and close itself. If your cutoff machine has a purge button, press this button several times until you see the bulb filled with fuel. This will fill the carburation system and fuel lines with fresh cool fuel for faster, easier starting. Never drop start your cutoff machine. This is extremely dangerous, and you can easily lose control of the machine. Only use the following methods of starting your cutoff machine each and every time you start it. Steel offers two distinct handle designs on their cutoff machines, a top handle design and a rear handle design. For the top handle design units, use the following starting method. Make sure the machine is sitting in a clear and unobstructed area for starting and that no bystanders are in the area. With the machine sitting securely with the wheel clear of the ground and with solid footing, place your left hand on the forward handle with the thumb fully wrapped around the handle and press down firmly on the machine with a locked elbow. 
Kneel with your right knee on top of the rear handle. Grasp the starter handle with your right hand and pull gently on it until it engages. Now pull sharply on the rope. Do not let the rope and starter grip snap back. This could cause it to break. Slowly allow the rope to rewind and repeat the pulling procedure until the machine tries to start. On the rear handle designs, you will follow the same directions of making sure that the machine is sitting in a clear and unobstructed area, that there are no bystanders in the area, and with the machine sitting securely with the wheel clear of the ground, with solid footing, place your left hand on the forward handle with the thumb fully wrapped around the handle and press down firmly on the machine with a locked elbow. Now place your right foot through the opening of the rear handle. Grasp the starter handle with your right hand and follow the procedure as described previously. The first time the machine attempts to start, once again push in the compression release button and move the choke to the open position. Not doing so and trying to start one more time with the choke in the full choke position may immediately flood the machine. Pull on the starter rope. When the engine starts, squeeze the throttle trigger lightly for about 30 seconds to allow the engine to warm up. When the carburetor is correctly adjusted, the wheel will not turn at idle. If the wheel turns at idle, you can adjust the idle screw appropriately. Turning the screw clockwise speeds up the idle, and counterclockwise slows the idle down. If you are unable to keep the wheel from turning at idle, refrain from using that machine any further until you can return it to your steel dealer for the necessary repairs or adjustments. To stop the engine, simply move the off-on switch to the off position and wait for the wheel to come to a complete stop. You are now ready to go to work. The use of any cutoff machine can be dangerous. Because cutoff machines are high-speed, fast-cutting power tools, special safety precautions must be observed to reduce the risk of personal injury or fire. It is extremely important that anyone who is going to use or maintain a cutoff machine reads and fully understands the instruction manual and the safety precautions. You must be in good physical condition and mental health and not under the influence of any drugs or alcohol that might impair vision, dexterity, or judgment. Don't operate a cutoff machine when you are fatigued. If you are tired, take a break. You should only operate your cutoff machine in good visibility, daylight, and dry conditions. Be alert of your coworkers and watch for signals they may give you in regards to the work area or emergencies. Never operate your cutoff machine indoors as it produces toxic exhaust fumes. Only use your machine outdoors in well-ventilated areas. Steel cutoff machines are designed for handheld use or operation on a steel cutoff machine cart only. Clear the area where you will be working and avoid stumbling on obstacles and watch out for holes or ditches. Be cautious when working on slopes or uneven ground and take care if you are working in wet or freezing weather. When operating your cutoff machine by hand, always hold the cutoff machine firmly with both hands. Place your left hand on the front handle and your right hand on the rear handle and throttle trigger, regardless whether you are right-handed or left-handed. Always wrap your fingers tightly around the handles with your thumbs fully wrapped around the handle. Make sure the handles are in good order and free of moisture, oil, or grease. Make sure that whenever you are using your cutoff machine, that you have and maintain good footing and balance. Position the cutoff machine in a way that your body is clear of the cutting attachment as seen here. Never stand in a direct line with the wheel and never bend over the cutting attachment. It is preferable that you have your left elbow locked when operating the machine. Make sure the wheel guard is adjusted properly so that sparks, dust, and other materials are deflected away from the operator and cannot reach flammable surroundings. To reduce the risk of injury from fire, do not cut into any pipe, drum, or other container without first inspecting it and assuring that it does not contain a volatile or flammable substance. 
It is essential that you determine the direction of the cut exactly before applying the abrasive wheel to the work. Wheels are constructed for radial pressure only. Lateral side pressure must be avoided. Do not change the direction of the cut during the cut. This may produce a high torsional load on the wheel and may cause it to break or shatter. Never use an abrasive wheel for rough grinding. This can also cause a wheel to break or shatter, resulting in serious or fatal injury. Use your cutoff machine for cutting only. It is not designed for prying or grinding or scooping away objects. To achieve a clean and efficient cut, pull the abrasive wheel across the work or move it to and fro in the cutting direction. Do not use force to push the abrasive wheel into the work. Insert the wheel into the material only as deep as necessary to make the cut. Do not exceed approximately two inches in depth per pass. Do not operate in an area where the water or sludge can come into contact with live electric wires or sources. Another tip, whenever you are making long straight cuts on a wall or a floor using water and have marked your work with a chalk line, paint over the chalk line with a clear spray lacquer prior to cutting. This can help reduce the chance that the water will wash off the chalk line as you work. Never reuse a composite non-diamond abrasive wheel that has previously been used with water. Those wheels need to be discarded once used or at the end of each day of use. Make certain that water does not flow on the composite non-diamond abrasive wheel when the machine is not in use. The wheel can absorb that water and it can affect the balance of the wheel. It is a good idea to shut off the water to the wheel before the wheel stops at full throttle for approximately 30 to 45 seconds so that excess water will be slung off. And be sure that water is being evenly applied to both sides of the wheel, since uneven distribution can cause one-sided wear. If a cart is being used to make long and straight floor cuts, be sure to sweep away debris from the path of the cart wheels first. Also be sure that the cutting wheel and the cart are in alignment. And when you have completed your work, stop the engine and be sure the wheel has stopped rotating before setting down the cutoff machine. Reactive forces may occur at any time the cutting wheel on your cutoff machine is rotating. If the wheel is slowed or stopped by frictional contact with any solid object or by pinching, reactive forces may occur instantly and with great force which could result in the operator losing control of the machine, which may, in turn, result in serious or fatal injury. Understanding the causes of these reactive forces may help you avoid loss of control. These reactive forces are categorized as pull away, climbing, pinching, rotational kickback. The most common of these are pull away and climbing. If the contact is at the bottom of the wheel, a cutoff machine will try to pull away from the operator pull away. If the contact is at the front of the wheel, the wheel may attempt to climb the object being cut, climbing. Pinching occurs when the piece being cut closes on the wheel. If the wheel is severely pinched at the upper quadrant, the wheel may be instantly thrown up and back towards the operator with great force in a rotational kickback motion. The greater the force generated by any of these reactive forces, the more difficult it will be for the operator to control the cutoff machine. Any of these reactive forces may, in some circumstances, cause the operator to lose control of a cutoff machine, allowing the rotating wheel to come into contact with the operator, which could result in severe personal injury or death. Here are some ways that you can reduce the risk of injury from loss of control from reactive forces, including kickback. Hold the cutoff machine firmly with both hands. Maintain good balance and footing at all times. Never cut while standing on a ladder. And if you are working on a scaffold, make certain that it is OSHA approved, secured, and stable. Position the cutoff machine in such a way that your body is clear of the plane of the cutting attachment. Avoid standing in direct line with the wheel. Never bend over the cutting attachment, especially when the guard is pulled back toward the top and there is a risk of reactive forces. Do not cut above shoulder height. Do not cut wood or any other material for which the abrasive wheel is not authorized. Caution. Cutoff machines are designed for use with abrasive wheels in good condition only. Machines designed for use with wood cutting or other tooth blades use different types of guarding systems, which provide the protection necessary for those types of blades. 
Machines such as cutoff machines, which are designed only for use with abrasive wheels, require a different guarding system, which is not designed to provide protection against all dangers presented by circular saw blades, carbide tip blades, rescue blades, or wood cutting or tooth blades. Never cut wood of any type. Never use circular saw blades, carbide tip blades, rescue blades, wood cutting blades, or toothed blades of any nature. Their use increases the risk of injury from blade contact, thrown tips, and reactive forces, including kickback. When cutting with diamond wheels, carefully apply the wheel to the object to be cut at approximately half throttle, and then accelerate to full throttle and continue the rest of the process at full throttle. When using a composite wheel, always begin and continue to cut at full throttle. Do not overreach. Use your cutoff machine for cutting only. It is not designed for prying or shoveling away any objects. Support both sides of the pipe being cut in such a way that the pipe will not shift and pinch or bind the wheel during or at the completion of the cut. Never make a cut that results in a binding of the wheel. Be alert to shifting of the workpiece or anything that could cause the cut to close and pinch the wheel, as demonstrated here. Support the workpiece in such a way that it is secured and that the cut remains open during the entire cutting process. For example, when cutting pipe on the ground, make sure the pipe is on a level surface and secured. Cut approximately 90 degrees around the pipe, roll it over, re-secure the pipe, cut another 90 degrees, and repeat this procedure until the pipe is completely cut. The use of wedges on pipe can be a great aid in this process. When cutting pipe with a diameter up to approximately 16 inches that is beneath ground level, such as a water main, using the following procedure can help reduce the risk of pinching and reactive forces. When possible, avoid long lengths of unsupported pipe in order to reduce the amount of shifting that may occur when the pipe is cut through. Comply with local, regional, and national regulations, such as those from OSHA, on proper trenching. Mark your cut. Then begin the process by cutting the lower half of the pipe, first cutting down from the side until the midpoint of the bottom is reached, and then further up the same side, as shown here. Repeat the same process on the other side, making sure that the two bottom cuts meet. Leave enough of the top section uncut at this time to support the pipe. Before completing the cut, support the bottom of the pipe with bricks or wood blocks, or as in this example, with a lanyard tied off to an excavator or other piece of machinery with a hydraulic boom or bucket to help prevent the pipe from pinching. Once done, mark your second cut if needed and then support the center section to be cut out either from the bottom with bricks or wood blocks, or as in this example, by attaching the lanyard to the center of the section to be cut out. Repeat the process as before. Once the final top cut has been made, you can remove the center section of pipe. Use wet cutting if feasible. In a pinch situation, the water can act as a lubricant and reduce the energy of reactive forces. Use extreme caution when re-entering a cut and do not turn the wheel at an angle or push the wheel into the cut, as this may result in a pinching of the wheel. Be alert for gyroscopic forces that are caused by the rapid spinning of the cutoff wheel. These forces result in opposition to directional change, as seen here when the operator attempts to move the machine in a sideways direction. When finished with your work, use the following rules for storing your cutoff machine. Remove the wheel and store all of your wheels in an area not exposed to direct sunlight or other sources of heat that is dry and not exposed to frost. A temperature controlled area is best. And remember, if you have a composite non-diamond wheel that you have used with water that day, break it and discard it, not to be used again. Clean your machine of dust and other materials, drain the fuel tank into an approved container, and run the engine at idle until it quits, which will purge it of any excess fuel still in the system. 
And finally, always store your cutoff machine in a dry, secure area where unauthorized persons will not have access to it. We hope this training helps you better understand the safety, maintenance, and operation of your steel gasoline-powered cutoff machine. Thank you for taking the time to learn more about steel.